The most valuable design lessons don't always come from the world championship robots. They come from seeing how teams create clever, effective solutions to solve complex problems under real-world constraints. We really went for the pivoting arm system. Uh, mm-hmm. We took the design of a team in America, and yep. they also had an arm, a different arm system for extending it. But... Yep. The robot you're about to see is a great example of how you can use smart design and materials to stay competitive on a tight budget. And it will give you some ideas that you can bring back to your own team. I'm Coach Pratt, and as a robotics educator and coach of national champion FTC teams, I know that understanding a team's process is where the real learning happens. In this episode of FTC Robots Revealed, I'm sitting down with Team 26122, one megabot from the Netherlands. We're going to walk through their game strategy, break down their intake and outtake systems, and then focus on their massive 3D printed double helical gear that they built for a pivoting lift arm that's strong enough to hang their entire robot. So do you want to tell me about your overall strategy so far and how you approached it? Are you a specimen robot? Are you a sample robot? Yeah, we uh, mainly cover a sample, actually. We thought it would be easier to just grab them. So like the thing with specimens is you need to take time out of your out of your competition to also put the clip on it and then grab it and put it on the rack. So that was way too hard. And we thought we could uh, score way more points by just, you know, putting as much samples in a bucket instead of just trying to hang it and aim all that so we really went more for the nice and simple approach instead mm. of the mm-hmm. yeah i'm a big fan of the the kiss engineering principle right keep it simple stupid yeah, well, yeah. that's really what we went for you know yeah cool okay you want to tell me about your intake what is your strategy on that well actually the same it's all yep. just as simple as can it's be because intake outtake right yeah it's it's the same thing it, it, it we just turn it around if we want to take it out and the other way if you want it in. So it's, yep. again, we're just as simple as can be because, well, we Googled a lot and went went through hundreds of designs from other people around the world, but we couldn't hmm. really find a good one. So in the end, I decided to make my own Okay, and try it, you know, something simple. Now it looks like you year. have a, a like a TPU wheel here yeah. and then you have an insert on the inside running on a five millimeter hex bore. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. What, uh, is that a 3D printed? Flap no, wheel or is that a purchase? Actually, flap just a uh, ref part. We uh, okay. Yeah. When we started the season, we got started kit, and it was in there. It, yeah. It's also in the starter bot, so yep. we kind of took the idea of the starter bot and mm-hmm. tried to implement it ourselves. Yep. Okay. How consistent have you found that intake has been for actually picking up pieces? Really consistent. Yeah. It's rarely that it doesn't want to go in, mm. but then you just kind of jiggle it. And do you have any color it. sensors in there, or is it? No, we actually have the space for it, but. We couldn't figure it out in time, and okay. we were really short on time, actually, because yep. at the starting of the season, we had a way different robot, so... Yeah. Okay. And tell me about your uh, your kind of main lifting arm here, because it looks like it's a big pivoting arm system. Yeah, so we yep. really went for the pivoting arm system. Uh, mm-hmm. We took the design of a team in America, and yep. they also had an arm, a different arm system for extending it, but yep. mm-hmm. really, it was way too short for us, and it... Mm performed really poorly so we yep decided to give our own take on it so we took the popular string arms yep. you see all around ftc yes and yeah, yeah i'm familiar with that up. you kind of got like the the dual strong yeah. uh, system here right so an an x straighter yeah. an x straight wire and a retract wire yes yep yep yeah i'm a big proponent of that system i would yeah, say the, the, yeah, it's a bit hard, but yep. once you figure it out, it can work really well. And it's running off of these little spools back here, yes? Yeah, okay. we all yep. try to fit it as much in mm-hmm. the arm as it mm-hmm. could. What's your total extension? You have no problem reaching the high basket and the high chamber? Yeah, actually, it was so long, we need to make our own cable. So we yeah. took two cables, cut it in half, okay. and soldered it together. Yeah. Because yeah. it was actually so long that you couldn't buy a long enough cable from around. And is the... With your string here, is that, uh, or sorry, your slides itself, is that a standard drawer slide? Is it Yeah, a, it's just uh, a drawer slide from Amazon. Okay, uh, yeah. It's actually a pretty bad one, but you know, <laughs> it works. You know what? I There's nothing wrong with low-cost stuff that functions. Yeah, we low budget, yep. so you know. Yeah, totally, totally fair. Yeah, some people get a little concerned about not having the highest cost parts, and yeah, I think that's the that wrong way of going really matter, it. you know. Yeah, okay, cool. And do you have a hang mechanism? Is your hang actually functioning? You were saying that yeah, it may it not be at the moment. Really well. It's yeah. all PLA plus, so it's yep. pretty strong actually. Yep. 
And how does that hang work bit. then? Uh, the hang works by getting the robot and sending it to the back of the submersible and yep. cutting the claw. Okay, so up, that actually it rests itself up. up. You drive into it, and then yeah. you pick yourself back up. So we up. back up into it, and then we just turn the arm. And that just hooks you right yeah. up, and so you just set to... this thing back down really hard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then what do you have going for, and this is your hard stop for your arm, so the yes. arm doesn't <laughs> peel over, yes? It was just easier, you know? Yep. I'm assuming you also are using an encoder on this, but this is a yeah. adjusting case kind of point? Yeah, it's also... Mm-hmm. It's for programming and stuff. It's an encoder really important. Yes. But, yeah, it know. makes it easier. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything on here? What's what? Tell me about your drivetrain. Is it just right. a standard uh, mechanism wheel with four yeah. encoders? It's actually a standard mechanism wheel plus yep. an auto <laughs> sensor. That's kind of like uh, a drone teapot, but just one sensor. Yep. Okay. Kind of like the one you have in a mouse. Is it like an infrared sensor? Okay. Yeah. Where did you place your infrared? It's right on the battery pack up here. Yeah, you can't okay. see it as well, but yeah, is it really possible? Small. Yeah, I can lift it up yeah. So it's right here. Okay. How have you found the reliability of an infrared sensor over, or have you yeah. tested a drum tree? Yeah, our programmer knows all that stuff exactly, but yeah. in my head, it was like two millimeters off. It was okay. pretty precise. Yeah. And yeah. We okay. haven't experienced too much. Yep. Uh, so your issue. pathing's been pretty decent for the most yeah, part? Yeah, it's pretty okay. good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I guess last question then is what kind of driver automations or what kind of programming automations have you put in this to make yeah, this simpler? Yeah, so we simpler? mainly put a lot of automation into the arm. Yep. Because it's all the different positions. So we put it like yes. presets on different buttons on our controller. And okay. So, so like at this so angle. Like tell me an example of a driver or something. Yeah, so we go for the high basket. Yep. So we actually have a preset put on the high basket. Yep. So it should be like on this Is angle. there like a button you press? And then it lifts the arm up and extends the slides. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. And yep. we okay. put a toggle on the insect. Plus you also okay. to turn it. And then how does it actually outtake then? It just scoops it backwards? Yeah, we just yeah. turn the motor the other way. Does it go through these little grates? Or yeah, no, it goes... so the, the fingers go through the grates yep. and the grates hold the sample in place. So those don't spin out. No, those don't so spin out. So this is what... Oh, okay. So once you're on a, a higher angle, yeah. that's when it actually outtakes it out. Oh, what are you most proud of on this robot? Ooh, I think the look. It looks yeah? really it looks really great. Yeah, it's really sharp. I really like your color combo. Yeah, we yeah. Uh... And just just a personal shout out. I love the I love the Laley brand. Getting a little bit of yeah. uh, cattle robotics in there is always fun. It's our uh, sponsor next year. Yeah. Our title sponsor. So yeah. it's gonna Very be cool. Very cool. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Laley. It's also nice to see actual robotics competition sponsoring. Yeah. And you know, a local Dutch guy sponsoring in too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. This is a really cool robot.